Hello, my internet fans. We're here with another episode of the ever popular Stat Boy Rants here on the Casa D18 Studios channel and you Unlimited Radio 247.net. I am always the Stat Boy. I'm the Mikey, and I'm taking time out of my busy Price is Right slot schedule and Press Your Luck slot schedule to come and rant for you. I really do like Price is Right slots. Sometimes I just wonder why can't I have that kind of luck on a real slot machine. It's fake money, what can I say? Alright, Monday Night Raw, December 17th. 2012. But first, let's go one day before to quickly let me touch on TLC. Uh, of course, the big reason why I did not do the results show, I didn't watch the pay-per-view. I was working, and I didn't want to have a. I didn't want to have to just there sit there with, with 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 Renegade and say, okay, what happened? Okay, that sucked. Okay, what happened? I want to be able to watch the show and give you a proper results show. So, that's why Boss Man, even though he doesn't like being called Boss Man, Sean came in and took over. And now we have another, a, a new show on the, ch on, the, on the channel. So, there you go. You never know, you never know when they're going to pop up. But, uh, the big shocker of TLC, of course, is little AJ deciding to screw John Cena out of his ladder match and give Dolph the win, which was a bit of a surprise, don't, surprise, shock, whatever, it's like, you, you really are acting crazy there, AJ, what's up with that? No titles changed hands, which was a slap in the face to Wade Barrett, I mean, why Wade Barrett is not IC champion at this point, I have no idea, and I never knew they made chairs that big. Never, 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 never. So, now let's shoot on to Monday Night Raw. It's Slammy Night. And the big thing that WWE basically crammed down our throat every chance they get is you take your cell phone and you download the WWE app so you can vote on who you want to win the Slammy. Here's the problem. Raw is live on the East Coast. So unless you have like Dish Network, Direct TV, or or the big huge giant satellite dishes, even though those are are uh, now defunct, you have to wait till eight o'clock East Coast time or eight o'clock on the West Coast to watch Monday Night Raw. So of course Casa D eighteen, we have no voice. And of course, Cole is using his iPhone, and King is using his uh, his Samsung Galaxy 3. Great product product placement. I've got the HTC Inspire. Product placement, cool. The first Slammy of the night was the "Tell me I didn't just see that" Slammy. And of course, they dug up the Boogeyman. And as soon as he came out, he went right back, right back under the bed where he belongs, or he's in the closet, or wherever the boogeyman decides to hide. The no and, and just in case you guys didn't watch Raw, the nominees were Brad Maddox, uh, low-blowing Ryback, uh, the 18-second title match at WrestleMania, Kofi's rumble handstand, and CM Punk turning heel, delivering the GTS to The Rock, and of course... Kofi wins just for doing a handstand. That kind of trumps John Morrison's parkour elimination from the Rumble before that. I like that one much better. The next uh, Slammy Award goes to Comeback of the Year, and we got to see the New Age Outlaws. Always good to see the Outlaws. The nominees were Brock Lesnar, Chris Jericho, DX, and The King. And it there, that was a no-brainer. King had that one on lock. And of course, he jogged to the up to the ramp. And he's like, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that because then I'll give myself another heart attack. He made fun of his own of his own 
light light there. Vicky Guerrero came out next, and it was the kiss of the year. More like whoever decided to kiss AJ, or whoever AJ decided to kiss would get a slammy. AJ Daniel Bryan, AJ Kane, AJ CM Punk, and AJ John Cena. Oh, well, AJ John Cena was the most recent one, so of course the fans are going to pick that one, but then she decides to jump into the arms of Dolph Ziggler and plant one on him. Now, if you noticed, guys, the camera shot with, with AJ's short shorts were a little bit too good. You, you, were, you, you could have eased... If there was an upper shot, you'd be looking right down her shorts. I'm just saying. Then, one of the big Slammy Awards comes into play. Superstar of the Year. With a special guest. Presenter. Unfortunately, the sound guy, or maybe it was the presenter himself, decided to jump the gun. And the big news, Ric Flair is back in WWE where he belongs. He's very happy to be back. You know, he's got his two Hall of Fame rings and all that. Nominees were Cena, Big Show, Punk, and Sheamus. Now, and it went, it went to Cena. Boo! Now, Cena came out and he tried to give the slammy to Flair, which I can understand. That's respectable. That's that's nice. But let's face it, Flair hasn't hasn't been in WWE for a year anyway. And then here comes CM Punk coming out, hobbling out, and regardless of the fact that he's currently injured, he put up the best valid he's he's done everything. He possibly can in 2012. He's been he's held the belt for 393 days as of Monday. As of my show, he's at 395. Christmas Eve will be his 400th day. Now I don't know if Raw is going to be on the air at Christmas Eve because you know it's Christmas. So uh, maybe after uh, they they taped SmackDown this this week. Everybody got to go home for Christmas. That'd be the nice thing to do. Maybe Raw is going to be a, uh, I don't know, a retrospect or whatever. And then, oh shit. Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, the week after that is New Year's Eve, so then that'd be like the best of 2012. Maybe Vince should give everybody two weeks off for the holidays. And then you come back... And then you start to push toward the rumble. But anyway, Punk comes out and says, you know, just because I'm on crutches don't mean I'm the best in the world. I can beat you one-legged. Well, Flair says, well, yeah, right. He starts styling and profiling it, and he takes off his coat. And, it's, and I'm flashing back, it's like, oh, great. He's going to start taking his clothes off again when he was in WCW. And, and that is still one of my funniest Flair moments. It's like he, he, he rips off his suit... He pulls out like thirty one hundred dollar bills. He takes off his Rolex and takes off his ring and takes off his Armani shoes and he's just he stripped all the way down to his boxers. It's funny as hell to watch them to do it, but it's like funny. He ripped a one hundred dollar bill out of his pocket when he did that. And of course, Punk decides to you know cheap shot him with the crutches. Flair, the dirtiest player in the game, and then we put. We put Heyman in the figure four. Well done. He gets on the microphone and talks, and now the shield comes down. They want their 15 minutes of fame to continue. And just as they start to come down, we go to commercial. We come back. Team Hell No is in the, in the mix. And then, of course, just as they're supposed to put Flair through a table, Ryback comes out and makes the save. Good job there. The next Slammy was the LOL moment of the year. 
and we got Tenzai coming out with a big old cold compress on his head, and, and that's supposed to be funny. We have The Rock in throwing, doing his own little Boston Tea Party, throwing Cena's merchandise into the into the river. We got Team Hell No in their therapy session. Randy Orton in a food fight, and Vicky Guerrero dancing. And of course they went to The Rock, but The Rock didn't show up. Darn. Another episode where The Rock doesn't show up on wrestling, and, and he thinks he's going to, to get the belt. Yeah, right. The hashtag trend of the year, presented by... Uh, uh, Zack Ryder and Layla was hashtag feed me more, hashtag people power, hashtag little Jimmy, and hashtag WWWYKI. And because Ryback is so big right now, he got the slammy for that. And it was very nice that he mentioned Owen Hart. Very good on that one. Newcomer of the year. Uh, who, who presented for new, Newcomer of the Year? Seamus. Seamus did? Okay. Um, Rodas Clay, who, if you remember, was on NXT. Antonio Cesaro. Wade Barrett, who's been new since 2010. You know. And, of course, Ryback, who was part of Nexus. Ryback wins that one. Worst that was and then finally the last uh, slammy of the night showed uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat Mean Gene Okerlund and good old JR for match of the year and the nominees were uh, Taker and Trips from Wrestlemania Rock and Cena from Wrestlemania uh, Big Show and Seamus from, uh, I believe, last year's TLC, and I think it was, um, oh, what was that last match? Cause I, I actually fell asleep from it. I think it had, I think it was, uh. Oh, come on, help me out here. What was the last match that was nominated? Seamus vs. Big Show. Thank you. Wait, I said that already. I said Seamus Big Show. Same thing. I said Seamus Big Show, both WrestleMania matches. What was the, what was the third? Same thing. Anyway. Same thing. Taker and Trips got that slammy. And of course the fans wanted Taker. This was the first uh, appearance of Triple H with his buzz haircut. Jade was not happy. It's hair. Get over it. Honestly. No. It's hair. It's it grows back. Daddy. It grows back. No. Mine is proof positive. Anyway. And of course, Triple, Triple H gives us a little bit insight that we have not seen the last of Taker so that probably means he's coming back at Wrestlemania and the streak will be on. Alright. Over and all it was a good show this time around with the Slammies and stuff and seeing people come back and all that but um hmm uh yeah good stuff. Now on to some other news. A couple weeks ago, or a couple episodes ago, I put a story on Facebook about an inmate in Ohio who is condemned, and his biggest, uh, he, of course, he don't want to go, because, let's face it, nobody really wants to go. But, uh, his, his main thing is that he is too fat 
to execute. Or morbid obese is the proper term. Well, guess what? He got clemency from the governor because the governor felt that he was did not get a fair enough uh, a fair enough defense. So apparently, to all the people on death row, if you don't want to die, get fat. What is this country coming to? That that we uh, yeah. Governor John R. Cassius, K A S I C H. The Ohio Parole Board voted to recommend clemency for 480-pound death row inmate Ronald Post, who contends he is too fat to be executed. And of course, the governor pretty much agreed with the board there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, like I say, what is this world coming to? Now, there is one other bit of news that I have to talk to talk about. Uh, last week, sadly, everyone is uh, still reeling about the very sad events that happened in Connecticut, where a gunman just waltzes into an elementary school with a gun and starts firing. Now, that is one of the worst things that can happen and one of the worst things anybody can do. And first, let me say that the guy that did this, I don't even want to say, I don't even want to look up your name right now. And you're lucky you're dead. Because if by some miracle you were still alive, prison wouldn't be good enough for you. The state doing what they're supposed to do to people who kill people, the death penalty, would not be good to you. The inmates would have justice for you. The, the parents would have justice for you. You would be lynched in public because you decided that your mama was the main target and then you decided to punish the kids. I admit that sometimes children under the age of six can always behave better. But to have all these little kids that are just essentially still brand new, snuffed out like that. You know, I'm surprised I'm not throwing up in the back. You, you just don't do it. You, like I say, this guy is so lucky he's dead. A spot in hell isn't even good enough for this guy. You know, if there's some evil voodoo black magic that can torment a soul, then maybe that's not good enough. Now, of course President Obama is doing what he is supposed to be doing, which is consoling families and, and allowing the, uh, I just totally lost my thought at that point, but he, he, he's, He's doing what he's supposed to be doing in, in consoling because that's his job as president. Now, he showed up in Connecticut Sunday afternoon. And it is pure coincidence that Sunday night football was going on at the same time on NBC. 
and the entire first quarter of the football game was not shown. And there is, should be a strong majority, if not everybody, that should understand that 26 children being gunned down in a school is much more important that the President of the United States is talking and regardless if you don't like him when the President of the United States talks you damn well listen whether you're, de whether you're Democratic whether you're Republican but apparently there is a small or a a bigger part that want to watch a football game on Sunday at 5 o'clock. They're going on Twitter saying they, they use the N-word. And I don't even like saying that word. And I'm not going to repeat that word because I hate that word. But just because Barack Obama is an African American and to say it like that, to say get this N off my TV and put on my football, fuck you! Who the fuck are you people? Football is more important than the president doing that? I don't think so. I would rather watch the president on Sunday than watch football. And you know what, folks? I'm not the only one who thinks this way. I don't, I, normally I don't do this, but when, when this happened, and she, and I'm tagging out. In fact, I'm going to let her finish the show. So I'm done, okay? I'm done. Stat Boy is out. Thank you all for watching. So, and I'll see you all next week, especially on Unlimited Radio 24-7, okay? But I'm done. We're, I'm going to tag out, and I'll see you all next week. Pinky, you're in. I have been tagged in. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pinky. I'm actually speaking as me today, Elizabeth Denise Leggett. I have a few words. For you damn patriot asshole ball sucking jerks that call my president that I voted for twice a nigger. Not a nigga, a nigger. Let me give you just a little taste of what these damn patriot jerk and ball sons of bitches had to say this past Sunday. On Twitter, at Slow burn, let me spell that for you. S-L-O-W underscore B as in boy, E-R-N as in Nancy. So Obama has something to say, I'm paraphrasing. So Obama has something to say about the 26 kids that died. Fuck him and his fugly ass kids. Explain something to you sons of bitches. Especially to you at Slow Burn on Twitter. I was once a little black girl, just like Sasha and Malia. I don't know who the fuck you think you are. Got the nerve to call my president that you probably voted for too, you racist bastard. A nigger and his kids, fugly, F-U-G-L-Y. Motherfucker, I saw your picture on Twitter. You uglier than sin with your racist ass. Fuck you and suck my dick. Now. At G E G R U B B S on Twitter, you got the nerve to share the sentiment of every last one of y'all damn patriot motherfuckers. Get this nigger off my TV. I want football. Fuck you and your football, bitch. Do you not understand? 26 little lives have been snuffed out because somebody been tricked. He wanted his mama and he got 26 babies gone. And then the trifling bastard, the carrot sucking jerk that he is, had the nerve to blow his own brains out. You better be glad I ain't there beating your fucking ass. There ain't a spot in hell that's good enough for you. I honestly think you should take it down the, into the piss of Shaw. S-H-E-O-U-L. That is lower hell, you stupid son of a bitch. And fuck every last one of y'all who got the nerve to call my fucking president a nigger. You looking at a nigger, nigger, black woman, right here, niggas. 
fuck every last one of y'all that got something to say about this son of a bitch. Fuck every last one of y'all. I hope to God, and if you got something to say, leave it right here, or better yet, hit me up on Twitter, bitches. Miss Pinky 1975 For the those of you who can't spell M-I-S-S-P-I-N-K-Y 1975 at Twitter. What? Fuck every last one of y'all. And if you got something to say, I'm woman enough to address it as such right here. Y'all done lost your motherfucking minds. You gonna talk about the president speaking words of comfort to the families that he can't be there individually for right now? Because it interrupted your football. Excuse me, niggas. The fir uh, uh, excuse me, first quarter of football is 15 fucking minutes. And y'all couldn't wait 15 fucking minutes before you get out the fucking air to say something about it? Y'all had to say something about it as soon as he was on the air. Fifteen fucking minutes is a quarter of the ball. Go Bears. Yeah, yeah, Packers too. You bastards. You couldn't wait fifteen fucking minutes for this president, who y'all probably elected again, to speak words of comfort and solace to the families of those children that cannot be comforted right now. Them lives have been snuffed out because somebody even tripped out. As far as I'm concerned, to slow burn and whatever your second name is, G-E-G-U-B-B-S, at Twitter, both of y'all. Here's something I got for you. Fuck you, kiss my ass, and suck my fucking dick.